In today's video, how much training volume do you need to build muscle? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. Thank you for joining me for today's video topic, which is how much training volume do you need to build muscle? Now, today's topic comes in kind of handy because I did a video last week, which was a discussion on a review of some research that came out that basically said on the internet that you, if you were in the gym for more than 13 minutes, you were wasting your time. Well, when I looked deeper into that online article, what I found was it was based on some research that was done by Brad Schoenfeld, Brett Contreras, as well as some others. And when I looked deeper into that research, well, that's not what the research showed at all. It was a very short study, an eight week study, where they had three different groups of males training. Each group did different amounts of volume. What the study showed was that the strength increases across all three groups were similar over the eight weeks, but what was not similar was muscle hypertrophy or the increase in the size of the muscle. So, just so happens that this month's issue of MASS, the monthly application in strength sport, well, they're reviewing this article as it should be reviewed, not in a Cosmo article meant to kind of debunk or misguide people or just be something that grabs attention but has no merit to it, okay? Now the guys at MASS are fantastic okay eric helms greg knuffles and mike zordos are some of my favorite people in the fitness industry and what they're doing is reviewing all the research that comes out so we can do what with it understand it and use it and and basically they lay out the research in a, a way that i can understand it that you can understand it so check the link below if you're interested in getting a subscription to mass it's been out for a couple of years now there are a ton of great reviews of research and it's just helped me with insight into how i should coach people how I should make decisions in designing training programs, fat loss programs, strength programs. Um, these guys are leaving no stone unturned. Now, the study that came out by Brad Schoenfeld et al. discussed training volume over an eight week period. Eight weeks is a long time, but in the grand scheme of the life of a lifter, eight weeks is not that long of a time. So what did they find? Well, they found basically the gist was the quadricep and the biceps of the group that did the most volume increased the most. And so there is a dose dependent relationship between training volume and muscle size, which I think most of us would agree with. Now, for those that are not familiar with what training volume is, you just multiply your sets times your reps times the weight lifted, that gives you a training volume. Now, if you do a body part multiple times per week, well, you might get more training volume per week. Now, this is what I suggest beginners do when they become intermediate. To start off for a beginner, training volume really is not gonna be that important because you're gonna get the stimulus just from getting in there and moving weight. Your body is going to respond. When we really need to start paying attention to training volume and things like this is once we reach an intermediate phase where we basically stop responding. When we stop responding to the gym, that's when two things need to happen. We need to start paying a little bit of attention to how we're programming our training, how we're lifting, things like that, and then also our nutrition. Because if you have an increase in training volume but you're not actually increasing your nutritional intake, you might not get the benefit of that added training volume, okay? So, one thing I noticed in my training career was I would often hit training plateaus. And I, what I would try to do would be try to increase my training volume in a single session. And that's back when I was afraid of training more than once a week because when I was growing up, the magazines would often harp on things like overtraining. I have since come to learn that overtraining does not mean what I thought it meant then. And that I can train a muscle more than once per week. So what I used to do was, man, my arms aren't growing. I'm doing 22 sets. So what we're gonna do this week is we're gonna bump it up to 30 sets. Then we're gonna bump it up to 35. Well, there's definitely a law of diminishing returns there. There is such a thing as maximum recoverable volume, okay? And I think it's probably somewhere in the 10 to 20 sets range for a single session for that body part. Now, body parts that have a lot more dense muscle, body parts like the back and the, and the legs, 
I think you can probably get away with a little bit more, maybe 20 to 30 sets per body part per session, but something like a bicep, a tricep, some of the smaller muscle groups, I think 10 to 20 is the sweet spot. Then what you want to do is if you're going to increase training volume, you can increase it in other ways. You can increase it by ch changing the load per session, or you can train twice per week. That's where I found my sweet spot. After years of not making progress, when I took a risk because I thought it was going to be a, a risky decision and I thought, you know what, I'm going to train twice per week. Well, lo and behold, I started making progress again. Why? Well, because it wasn't taking my muscles a full week to recover. I was in a good position. I was eating enough and I was recovering. So I started paying attention to my training volume. Then I started writing down my workouts in an Excel spreadsheet and I started adding things up and going, you know what? This works, this works. Then the next step for me was looking at the intensity of each session. So Lane came out with something called power hypertrophy training years ago where he, he suggested or implied that training perhaps in a lower rep range once per week and a higher rep range, changing the intensities might be even better and that has been beneficial as well. But what I really liked about mass for this month was that they broke down this study by Brad Schoenfeld. They looked at all the positives that came out of it and they looked at all the criticism that it's been getting and they give you the feedback. Now, what I really liked was the perspective that studies are not done as a way to tell you how to train. This was an eight week study with a very specific group of people. No single study is going to give you all the information you need on setting up your training. Now, most of us that are interested in training like putting it into practice. I like finding out something, putting it into practice, and seeing how I respond. That's going to be the best way, the best method for you, I, and everyone to respond because we are all such individuals. Reading about stuff is not going to get it done. You can't read about working out and get better at working out. You need to get your butt in the gym. And there's nothing to be lost by taking six weeks, eight weeks, four weeks, trying something out, and if you like it, great. Maybe you are able to benefit from that for years to come. If you don't like it, great. Now you know one thing that you do not enjoy. Another thing I'll say is, things that I did not enjoy when I was younger, I now enjoy that I'm older. When I was younger, I didn't really do well with high intensity techniques like super high reps and drop sets, but that's because I hadn't worked up or built up my body to handle that type of training. Now, that is the training that I much prefer. So, over the course of the life of a lifter, we're gonna go through many, many phases, okay guys? So, looking at a single study that was done over eight weeks with a small group of people as the answer to every question that you've ever had in the gym, well, it's probably not gonna get it done. So, when the question comes to how much volume does it create muscle, well, Early on, at the beginning of a lifter's career, when you just start going in the gym, I would say it doesn't really matter. It just means that you go in the gym and you lift because you're gonna get stronger each time you lift. You're gonna get encouraged by the progress that you see. But then, when you hit that intermediate phase where you feel like you're kind of spinning your wheels, that's when you need to be a little bit diligent. This is when a lot of people check out. When it becomes tough, they check out. And you know what I say? Goodbye because this is when the real bodybuilders, you, me, the people that love this sport, dig a little deeper. We look for the next answer. And I'm not saying that I never got frustrated and stopped going to the gym. What I'm saying is I stopped going to the gym, but I got back in there and then I got sick of hitting the same plateaus and I wanted to bust through them. And that's where I started looking for information and that's how mass can help you. So look below. I didn't have mass. I'm old, I used to have magazines and I had to trust what Jay Cutler was telling me. Granted, I like Jay, but I don't think his nutrition and training advice worked for me. Okay guys, so the most important thing we wanna do here is learn more and that's what Mass is gonna help you do. So click the link below, check it out, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'm myself